Okay, so ways that I avoid burnout at this time in my life is I don't do overtime. Hey ladies, how you doing? So I want to talk about burnout in the workplace. I know I have experienced it more than once and I know some of you have as well. I'm going to share with you some of my tips and things that I have done to kind to eliminate, deal with it or see what my next step is going to be and I'm going to focus on that more in the video. Let's go. Have you ever been on a job where you have so much to do you can't seem to catch up. You working over your 40 hours and you're eating lunch while you're working. I know I have been there and I had to sit back and say, this is not healthy. This is not, oh, I'm so passionate. Oh, I love my job or I'm here for the cause. No, that's burnout. Because when you are overworked in one area, then you're pulling away from another area in your life. And nine times out of 10, that's your self-care and your self-love. So we can't jeopardize or sacrifice any of that. So when you're at a point where you're at work and you feel like you got too much work to do, you're working your lunch breaks, you're taking work home, doing work on the nights and the weekends. You know, I've been there and my previous job was not giving out any pay they were giving out comp time and i had to realize comp time don't pay no bills none whatsoever then you're getting all this extra comp time added on to your vacation time then your work is just so high you can't even take your vacation time or this comp time because there's so much work to do so you're not even benefit from it so needless to say here's some things that i've done to deal and overcome burnout in the workplace. Before we get into how to deal with burnout in the workplace, let's talk about some of the causes and some of the things that sometimes management seems to overlook. And this always trickle down to the staff or a staff member. High turnover. You can't keep employees. And then when the work has to get done and the work trickles on to one person or to two people and then those two people or that one person is being overworked and next thing you know you're burnt out because you're trying to keep up because sometimes some jobs or some, some jobs you have to stay on top of things in order for the work to flow sometimes when you get so far behind you don't even know what's going on so you're trying to work 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 like you're on a hamster wheel and sometimes management when they see that you're really trying so hard to keep things up to par and you're working hard like that they're like oh well if she can do it or if he can do it there's no need for us to even hire anybody we could just keep paying her or him to keep doing it and we still getting what we need and uh -uh they need to hire someone else bottom line <laughs> another way burnout can come about is when management want to assign you more responsibilities more projects more assignments however they choose to categorize it without evaluating your current workload and you don't want to lose your job. You don't want to be defiant. You don't want to go against the grain. Like, okay, okay, okay. And you're trying to sit here and figure out how you can get this work done. And next thing you know, now you're overwhelmed. Now you're trying to get this work done, slacking on the other work, or you're making mistakes. Your quality is not as good as before because now it's just you're getting spread too thin. And sometimes management doesn't even realize that because all they're focusing on is getting work done. You know, and they're not looking at what it takes to get the work done. So in saying all of that, the list can go on and on on how you can um, pretty much determine when burnout is going to arise in your situation or sometimes when it just happens or certain causes of it. But here are some ways that I have dealt with burnout and I try to avoid burnout. I kind of navigate these three things right here. And there's others as well, but here are some three that I normally do and then you're gonna see how I got to my third one okay so ways that I avoid burnout at this time in my life is I don't do overtime I used to be that employee to the point where I used to work additional hours yes I am salaried I've been salaried for a couple of years now and some jobs may say oh we can you do this on the weekend can you do that and we give you some comp time or something like that no I need pay 
I need pay because your policy says one thing and you're trying to do one other thing. No, I don't do overtime anymore. I'm not burning myself out for someone else anymore. Because at the end of the day, you can hire temps, you can hire consultants, you can pay somebody else that's hourly that can do this. I'm not trying to be above anyone, but you're not going to burn me out on the expense of whatever. You're not going to do it. So I avoid working overtime, especially in my field. If I can't get it done within my time span, then it has to wait. If you want something that's more, then we're going to have to sit at the table and see how we can evaluate how we can get this done in a timely fashion. Because also keep in mind, I have other tasks to do that are due. So sometimes you have to let management know all they're looking at is trying to get something done. And I understand their role, but you don't want to get burnt out and then you're not giving out quality work, if that makes any sense. So I don't do overtime. Now, if you need your overtime and you're getting paid, by all means, do it. Because I'm not taking away anybody's coin. But I'm just giving you an example for those who may be salaried or those who may not get paid overtime because it just may not be available to them. Cut out the overtime. Because sometimes when you overdoing it and you're bringing on more than your body can handle, that can lead to burnout. Number two, talk to management. Let management know what you're going through before it even gets to the point where you're going to get burnt out. Explain to them what is going on, what your current workload is. Because they may not know. They may have forgotten. And that can happen. Because, you know, things do happen. Talk to them what your current workload is, what they have given you, and how it's becoming you know, a little tight for you, and how can they possibly be assistance to you. Nine times out of ten, good management will either jump in, have someone help, or kind of divvy up some stuff to make sure that you are comfortable. Because nowadays, a lot of employers are understanding that burnout is serious, and not only will it affect their employee, it can affect their business. So they will definitely take key. Number three. Now, if you've talked to management and you trying to avoid some things on your own, you know, for your own personal reasons, like, you know, not doing overtime, not staying late, you know, not working on the weekend, you know, doing time management within your shift. If it's an eight hour shift, 12 hour shift, you know, do what you're supposed to be doing and all else fails. This is what I did. I moved on because that was an indication that I had no help from management. I tried my best to, you know, resolve it on my own and no resolution. So it was time for me to move on because my well-being is more important than my place of employment. You know, yes, it feeds me, it clothes me, it pays my bills, but if I'm burnt out and I don't want to be there, how am I going to get paid? And I don't have a good support system via my management and I can't even work it out on my own, there's a problem. There's a big problem. We aren't in a time where we have to literally stay somewhere because we are unhappy. If you're unhappy, choices have opened up for us in droves. We can pretty much move on. Yes, you know, I know my generation and the generation before, we come from a place of um, stability. Not that no other generation doesn't, but more so ours and the one before the baby boomers. You know, you stay at a job for a number of years and things like that. My mom has done, my mom did that. So that generation stays on a job for over 20 years. You know, it's all about, you know, going to school for the 12 years or sometimes 20 years. And then you stay at a job for 40 years and then you retire and you only have a minimum years to actually do that. These days, you don't have to put up with that. You can pretty much find your life and choose your life and choose your happiness, if you will. So you don't have to stay somewhere. So if you can really go through those things, like try to self resolve things on your own, talk to management and no resolution, you have that option to move on. Employers are here these days to make sure that their employees are happy and they don't want to burn them out because not only do they want to have a happy work environment, they want, you know, for lack of better words, production. You know, they want things to be pushed on. And to kind of share some of my own experience, uh, a past job that I was on, I really enjoyed that job. I really enjoyed that place of employment, but the turnover was ridiculous 
ridiculous. Nobody would stay. And it was like, I was wondering why I was still there. I was like, what's wrong with me? Why are they moving on? And then one lady had said to me, Kelly, why are you still here? You have so much to offer. You can move on. This job is so beneath you. And I was like, who would say something like that? But that's how they felt. And after a while, it took me to realize it wasn't the job was beneath me. It was the fact that the management did not care. So that made that beneath me or anyone for that matter. You know, if you're working for a place where your management don't really care about their employees in any way, shape or form, they don't care if they have turnover and the position is empty for eight, nine months to a year and one person is holding it down, you're not compensating them. And sometimes compensation is not even enough because that stress and strain is still there. You're doing a two man job and you're, you're getting, they're giving you a couple little nuggets, you know, to keep you quiet. But at the end of the day, you're still stressed out. Is it really worth it? Now, if you have a goal and you gotta make a sacrifice because you wanna get some extra money, then all well be it. Never am I ever telling anybody, am I ever telling anybody to not get their money. But to avoid burnout, to avoid stress, to uh, maintain a good mindset, because a job can tear you to pieces. Remember, we're there eight hours a day. You know, at bare minimum, you know. So we have to be mindful of the things that we take on and be mindful of how our management is treating us. So to close this up, have you ever dealt with burnout? And if you have, how did you deal with it? And what were some things that you had to evaluate to make some executive decisions in your life to sit and say, this is what I'm going to tolerate, this is not what I'm going to tolerate, and this is what I'm going to do about this burnout? Please let us know in the comments. So I want to say hey to all my new subscribers, hey to all my loyals. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll catch you next video. Bye. <laughs>